Hello, my name is Aaron Cole. I'm here from the Naval Surface Warfare Center Crane Division. We're part of the U.S. Navy and specifically NAVC within the U.S. Navy. We have uh, diverse customer sets across the entire Department of Defense uh, and specifically within that SOCOM. Uh, and we've developed a counter unmanned aerial system. I'm the inventor of this device. I have a very broad background in electro-optics, uh, specifically over the past 18 years working for the Navy, but even broader th than that back in school. I, I have degrees in electrical engineering, mathematics and physics, a minor in philosophy, a master's in optical engineering, and I've been working in specializations of mechanical engineering and specifically computer vision, which I think you're going to see and appreciate um, as we go through and discuss this technology. As we've been, uh, as some of our customers have been really aware, specifically our warfighters, we've really been looking for long range detection of UAVs and more importantly, kind of the ability to differentiate those between birds, planes, drones, really other, any other object out there because we don't just want to say, hey, there's something over there. We also want to be able to inform our warfighters and the people that are interested of what that is and then kind of giving them a, uh, an artificial intelligence means of determining like, what kind of threat is this, right? So the solution was really needed to, to basically give our warfighters an unmanned version, a system to combat the challenges of really what are what is that UAV over there? What is that unmanned system that's coming at us in our operational areas? How do we detect it at significantly longer ranges than we can currently? Uh, and how do we do this passively so that we, if we're in an area where we're not, we're not trying to really radiate our presence or really give ourselves away, how can we make sure that we're not doing an RF-based solution? How can we stay off our comms? And how can we make sure that we're detecting that object passively and also doing discrimination so our warfighters can focus on the tasks at hand? And all this is very important from a human psychological standpoint of how do you do it autonomously? And how do you do that with low false, false alarms? Because I don't want to be constantly bothering somebody to say, oh, look, I saw a bunny in the clouds over there. You want to see that too, when that really doesn't make sense for our warfighters. I want to say, hey, there's a class one UAS. You need to engage this thing. And then how do we do this discreetly? And how do we make it easily transportable for our warfighters so they can jump out of the back of a helicopter or, or a plane, hit the ground running with it, and not feel overburdened uh, with that. So this first article prototype, you're going to see that that really works, and we really wanted to make sure that it worked in all weather conditions. So let's kind of discuss some of the imagery of really what the invention is, and that really started from our initial proof of concept, where you can concept where you can see me putting my hand up in the air, holding a drone, uh, and just kind of getting like basically looking at this technology, this long wave infrared polar metric technology, and saying, what kind of signatures can I pull off of various targets? Well, during this, some things that became very obvious were I can also pick off trees and I can pick off birds very clearly because each one of them has a unique signature in the background. We advanced that system from the small version that I just was sitting in the backyard to a much more complex, beautiful version that we then started to take to some uh, other missile test ranges and other parts with other areas in the country where we would very quickly look close at a drone and then basically pick off the signature information. And really what I'm showing you on the invention is looking at how this invention looking at the various ways in which it treats the physics of the of the world in which it looks at to identify a drone and then on the next slide you can or really in the image you also see what it looks like to see a bird or a plane and if you look closely at these images what i hope you gather from them just as and appreciate from them just as much as we did is look at the difference that you're able to see in each one of these frames. Like in the first drone, you can clearly see a white top there. And then in the next picture to its right, that white top looks is totally gone. And really what we're doing is we're looking at different polarization states in order to, um, from light, in order to really say this is a specific target. And the amazing thing about that, and I'll get to the advantages here in just a moment, is how much further we're able to really see. But I really would like you to take a moment when looking at the images, the still frames, uh, really look at the horizontal and vertical differences so that you can really understand how easy it was for our AI and ML uh, physics-based processes to go through and clearly see what the threats were and to differentiate birds from planes, from, from people, from tanks, from drones, right? So really the advantages here, and one of the very first things that shocked me about the advantage here is that we're able to detect small objects such as drones, class one UAS, even bigger classes, right? So bigger is just easier, but we wanted to say we can do the hard stuff as well as the big stuff. 
meaning that we could see objects six times further away using the exact same thermal imager. So taking the technology, putting it on the thermal imager gives us a 6x multiplier, which really well, we thought was pretty cool because, hey, maybe we should start just modifying systems with this and we don't even need AI for some of those. And then we started to say, what else can we do? Because we noticed there's uniqueness about the, the drones, we know uniqueness about the birds, the planes, um, the trains, the automobiles, whatever. Um, differentiation in this technology was pretty cool. We're able to configure and identify friends from foe. You know, we're able to pair this with other EO IR systems, NRF systems for advanced configurations where you're not worried about being quiet in the background, where you do have uh, a Q, a slew to Q type system. We also did design in like our, our type two, but you're looking at the, the type one prototype where we customize the optics to do 360 degrees all around you in the azimuth and 60 degree elevation, uh, specifically so you can detect large regions persistently. Uh, and then, of course, we spent a long time and a lot of effort to make sure we could do it fast and we could do it high frame rates. Um, and, of course, this system that you hopefully will be able to come by the booth afterwards and look at, easily transportable, and it's autonomous monitoring until the user gets a, needs to get an alert. Uh, and the one thing that I think we really built is the way in which we built this, this system is we're also able to track several hundred objects simultaneously, almost effortlessly, because of the way we went about doing this. So if we move beyond the advantages, and I hope that you see the, the awesomeness that we see as well, is the potential markets that are there. You know, obviously we did this for the military since we are the military. We really thought about how do we secure uh, our infrastructure and how do we really help our guys go out and take infrastructure and that kind of stuff. And then, of course, you, you could extrapolate that to event security, right? Because if you're worried about somebody attacking something that you care about, well, you can see more within a crowd using this. Uh, and then, of course, that extends always to law enforcement and then building and uh, security perimeters. And then, of course, airports. You know, if you're really worried about bird strikes and you want to see that birds are in the area and you want to be able to detect them at much at significant distances so you don't ever have to worry about a plane again, well, then you can always deploy this technology. Have you speak to our T2 folks and I want you to really, they'll give you some more information. We'll probably have a little Q&A and then we'll basically let you know that, you know, the patent is pending and it is available for licensing and collaboration. Hope you all have a wonderful day down there. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.